Hi everyone, welcome to St. Christopher's Sunday School. Today we are doing the video for Valentine's Day, February 14th. And today we are talking about Mark 9, 2 through 9. Before we jump into that, I want to remind you guys that Lent is on Wednesday, uh, February 17th, so just in a couple of days here. And um, we are having uh, Ash Wednesday drive through ashes. Um, and that is at 7 a.m. or 4.30 p.m. You can pick up your bags for um, the next five weeks worth of crafts when you come to get your ashes. So we hope you will be um, coming to get your ashes. And when you're here, um, you can pick up your bags for the next five weeks worth of crafts. And in that new bag, I'm very excited to share with you, there's tons of really fun, um, cute Easter stuff. So I'm looking forward to going through Easter with all of you and Holy Week. Um, yeah, so uh, before we jump into our Mark 9 reading, I want to um, go over some of our Lent stuff. So Lent doesn't officially start until Wednesday the 17th. Uh, but I want to go over everything with you since that is a Wednesday and today is the Sunday before. Last week we went through this, but I do just want to remind you, as you know, just a little bit about Lent. Um, it starts on Ash Wednesday. The ashes are from Palm Sunday last year burned. Typically, that's what we use. And we put the ashes on our foreheads. Um, and the season of Lent lasts 40 days, and it is the 40 days leading up to Easter. And during that time, we um, typically have a lot of prayer, fasting, reflections, um, and almsgiving. And the 40 days represent the uh, time that Jesus spent in the desert without food. Uh, <clears throat> and we will actually go over that story in two weeks. Oh no, next week. Next week is the story of Jesus in the desert. It's a really interesting one. Um, so I'm looking forward to sharing that story with you. So that is a little bit about Lent. For us, you guys should have received in your bag a Lent poster. And I gave you a sneak peek of this last week. Um, as a Sunday school community, we will have one shared promise. And that is for Lent. And that is to pray for our loved ones in our Sunday prayer box. So that, and this was your craft for last week, that we will do as a community. So that is a promise that everyone um, is making. Otherwise, you are free to choose any others you'd like to do. And remember, people often do, it's a promise of prayer, um, maybe fasting or abstaining from something, which means to not do something. And that's where I put, I'm not going to watch any TV for 40 days. No Netflix. No Hulu, no YouTube channel, whatever, no TV. Well, I mean, obviously I'm doing my YouTube videos, but you know what I'm trying to say. Can you believe that? And no social media, um, except that I do the social media for the church. So, But beyond that, I am not doing social media. So those are two things that I am abstaining or fasting from. I'm taking away. Um, but you can also add, maybe you'll do more journaling. So you already you'll have a weekly journal as you've had um, the entire time, but maybe one of your promises will be that you do the craft and the journal. Um, maybe it's that you're going to save up some money from your allowance to give to City on a Hill or the gathering or something else that's important to you. Uh, and maybe it's a different type of prayer option. Maybe you're going to um, come to prayer on Wednesday mornings. I don't know. You can come up with your own. If you need some ideas, please reach out. I would love to help you come up with some ideas. You can make this poster for yourself individually, or you can do one that you're all doing as a family. It's up to you guys. I gave you enough to be able to do either option. So there's enough for everyone to do their own individual Lent promises, um, or you can just do one as a family. Totally your choice. Throughout Lent, we'll be kind of um, ranking or giving ourselves a grade, so to speak, on how we've been doing with our promises. And so you can have a sad face, an okay face, or yeah, I've been doing really great, a smiley face on keeping your promises. 
please let me know if you have any questions. If you do make this, I would love to see a picture. I really want to know what you guys are promising for Lent. Um, so please let me know. I would love to hear how it's going for you and what you're deciding to do and how I can support you through it. Okay, wonderful. So um, it is still a few days before Lent, but I want us to start getting in the habit of using the prayer box. And like I showed you last week, um, we had a, our prayer for, I showed you February 7th. So we're doing the same thing again. And again, it's a little early. Lent doesn't start till the 17th, but just to practice being in the habit. I wrote my prayers for February 14th, 2021. And on here, I am praying specifically this week for all those who are feeling lonely um, on, or alone on the holiday of Valentine's Day. So anybody that's needing a little extra love on Valentine's Day, maybe they've lost a loved one, um, or maybe they just feel alone and need a little extra love. That is who I'm praying for, especially this week. Okay, let's jump into our reading for today. On um, It is the Transfiguration story, and I'm so excited to share this one with you. Um, and we are using Spark. It is page 358. And, oh, I love, so let me tell you in advance, we have three of our disciple friends in today's story. So, you know, I love to use our little disciple guide. Today, we are, our story includes Peter, James, and John. John is in blue, and he's a little bit harder to read, but he, he's down on, nope, this one. So we have Peter, James, and John. Now, keep in mind, we also have two James. We don't know actually which James this one is, but that's okay. Either James will do. So we've got three of our disciple friends in today's story. And it is called The Transfiguration. Oh, and I see my favorite little friend. He too is blinded by the light, so let's jump in. Peter, James, and John were very excited. They were climbing a mountain with Jesus. Higher and higher they climbed, right to the top. Then they noticed something different about Jesus. Jesus' face and clothes were bright and shiny like the sun. Moses and the prophet Elijah were standing with Jesus, talking about God's promise to save the world. Peter couldn't believe his eyes. Suddenly, a cloud covered the mountain. A voice said, This is my son. Listen to him. The voice was God. Peter, James, and John covered their faces. Then Jesus touched them. They peeked up. Everything was the same as it was before, even Jesus. On the way back down the mountain, Jesus, Peter, James, and John talked about God's promise, but they didn't tell anyone else what happened on the mountain for a long time. Wow. Okay. So today for our journal, we have um, our first question is coming right from the book. If you looked at a cloud in the sky, imagine hearing God's voice come from it. What is God saying to you? So imagine a cloud in the sky, or you could go out, certainly look outside your window and look at a cloud in the sky. Imagine hearing God's voice coming from it. What is God saying to you? Interesting. Okay, and then our other journal question is, what is Lent? And what is your promise to Jesus for Lent? Excellent. Let's jump into our craft, you guys. I have so such a funny story to tell you guys about this craft. So... There's two different versions of it. The first version um, is a drawing. So you have the cutout of Jesus that you received. Everybody got at least one, I think. Um, and then a piece of paper, which would have it would have would have been in the craft bag. Um, and you just need markers, scissors, 
and your glue stick. And all you do for this one is you would cut out your Jesus and you would draw the light that we heard about, the blinding bright light from the story. I didn't tell you your word. Obviously, I think you've seen it. It's from the book. It's transfiguration. That is our word for today. And that is the story. So transfiguration, very similar to transformation. Here we are. Okay, this is level one. I recommend this because I did level two, um, which I found off of Pinterest for you guys. And this is how it turned out. So this is what um, I would call a Pinterest fail. Uh, parents, I know you know what I'm talking about here. Um, looked really great online. Gorgeous picture of it. When I did it, it did not turn out quite as perfect as I would like. But it was still a fun experience. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Hopefully you can do yours a little bit um, better than mine. And, and all of them are fine. It really was just a cool experience to learn how to do some string art. So first thing you're going to do is cut out. I'm going to show you guys how to do this one. So to me, this one is a bit more self-explanatory. I'm not going to walk you through this uh, in detail. I will instead just do try to show you guys how you can do this string art. Um, and then when we get a little further, I will give you some tips and we'll talk a little more about it. Okay, so let's just jump in here. So you cut out your Jesus. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I want to get as close as possible just to get the shape and the outline. And for this, I don't know if I said you also need your glue stick as well as the first one. Both crafts need scissors, glue stick, paper. And then also in your small bag of, of little items, the Ziploc baggie, that's where you will find your um, thread and a tiny little needle, which I'll show you just as soon as I finish this part. Okay. So here he is cut out. And you're going to glue him on to uh, a piece of paper. You can either use your cardboard or there should be a piece of cardstock, which, what did I say cardboard? I meant to say construction paper, which is what I did for this one. Um, or you can use cardstock. I'm going to try the cardstock for this one. And you just take your glue stick. You want to glue on this side because that's the side that will go face down. And you're going to stick him right in the middle of the paper. Just like that piece. Just like this. Make sure you nice and glue it down. Okay. Next, as I was mentioning, in your bags, you should have um, either yellow, orange. Yellow or orange, I think, are the only two colors. Um, of your thread and everyone should have a small plastic needle. So before I show you how to do this part, um, what you're going to want to do on your sheet is take a pencil, a pencil is preferred, and you're going to go through and draw dots, kind of similar to where these should have been. So. Um, It'll look like one down low and then one up high, and one down low and one up high. Sorry, I'm doing this back. Here we go. Ugh. The camera is, there we go. Okay, so your dots are gonna be like that. So I'm gonna do it on here and I'll show you. One down low, one up high, one low, one up high. because you want it to look like light beams coming off of Jesus. So you see how one down low matched to one up high, one down low matched to one up high, and you're gonna do that throughout the entire sheet. Okay, then you're gonna take your um, yarn out. 
I found it helpful to break this up into sections because it was so long, it was really easily got tangled. And let me just tell you, I learned all of this the hard way. So if I did this a second time, I think I could do it a little bit better than this one, um, but it definitely took at least one practice. So if you know your sibling um, might not be doing this craft, you might ask them if you can use their supplies. Um, I like to just do that a little bit to get the needle, get the thread through the needle. And just get it long enough. And I would say maybe you want to do like three feet at a time worth of yarn. And you just cut it. And you poke, you're going to go in one side, pull through, through the other. So you want to kind of estimate where this hole would be. It's okay to not do it perfectly. Believe me. Okay. Pull through. And you don't want to go all the way to the end because then you will pull it out, but you want to go almost all the way. So maybe leave like this much thread hanging in the back, maybe a little less. So you do go all the way and then you put the holes directly into up top. And you pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. So there's one. Then you're going to want to circle back and you go through the back right now. So it's every other. So one through the front, second one through the back, one through the front, one through the back. Oh boy. I'm telling you guys, this took me an hour and a half to two hours. This is a very long craft. Um, so to me, this is one for older kids, uh, or if you're very patient and your parents want to help you. Um, also, I would say if you had multiple string, I think it'll look better with different colors, something I learned the hard way. Um, and to just be really patient. This is a good one for like a cold, snowy day, a good rainy day craft. This will keep you busy for quite some time. You just keep going in and out. And you keep going all the way around. Don't worry about the little line, the little um, dots. The more you fill it in, the more the dots will disappear. You won't even see them. Don't worry about them. I mean, try to make them small. And if you use pencil, I would say it's probably better. But I wouldn't worry too much. So you're just going to be weaving in and out, through and through, back and forth, all the way around here. Again, I think it looks better personally when I looked at Pinterest and saw um, people used multiple color strings. So maybe the first one you do all in one color. And then again, if your sibling is not doing the craft, you can borrow their thread. Um, or if you guys would like more thread, just shoot me an email or call the office and I'll send some in the mail for you so you can um, do this more. But I didn't really know what to anticipate with this craft. So um, this is one option for you guys. You can also just do the drawing or painting version of the configuration. Most important thing is that you learn the message and the story, and it's okay to do it imperfectly. Even Miss Jamie sometimes. Not all of them are winners. That's okay. It was still fun. It was a good learning experience. Okay. So we did that. I want to remind you that you do have your inserts that tell the same story of the transfiguration of Jesus. Jesus up on the mountain. There he is. But with different um, activities to do and to color. And also reminding you about your action items. 
Um, here is what you'll be getting, the Easter one that's coming up, the new one I made for you guys. I'm excited for this one. It's really fun. Um, please turn in your checklist. I'm so proud of you guys for doing these. And you can turn in as many checklists as you want. So, so far I think I've made, this will be the fourth one. So there's going to be four opportunities. You could get four prizes if you want it so far. How cool is that? I will not limit you. If you do the checklist, you get the prize. Okay. Let's, oh, did I give you your action item? Let's see. Oh, your action items are to complete your lamp posters um, and to remember to start your Sunday prayer box. Okay. We will close today, as we always do, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Great job, you guys. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day.